Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are getting started with chapter three, that is Test Automation Architecture. And as a part of this particular chapter, we just have one segment. However, we do have subtopics under this, which is 3.1, Design Concepts Leveraged in the Test Automation. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be talking about the capabilities in a test automation architecture and explaining you what exactly is the entire architecture of test automation. Well, to get started, of course, uh, as a part of this particular chapter, we will be talking about what is the architecture behind the test automation. And when we talk about building up a test automation solution, what exactly are the various parts of it and what exactly it takes to build it end to end? Because uh, automation is not just about creating a test in automation language and just running it. That does not return us on the investment. Of course, we may have to talk about the different layers of it, how exactly these communicate to the other tools which we may have for our day-to-day -day activities. And at the same time, how exactly this information can return us maximum on doing the automation for the entire uh, solution provided. And that is where archi architecture becomes important for an automation engineer to understand and implement when and wherever required. So to get started, the very first topic we have for you is talking about the generic test automation architecture. And here we're just trying to let you know that uh, what exactly a high level design for uh, the communication between the test automation and the system and the test which you're trying to automate uh, basically has. And at the same time, uh, the SUT, project management, test management, configuration management may have several communications which might be happening throughout. I would not like to deep dive before I move on to the next uh, slide, but I just want to give you a quick understanding that an automation tool, tool is only going to automate your test and perform the executions. But certainly there are many things else, like you know, you need to update the result, you need to let the test management tool know how many executions you have taken place, because test management tool is different from automation testing tool. They are for two different purposes. Now, if I further talk about things like configuration management, they take care of version control, history, object identification, and having traceability. Now, instead of doing manual testing, if I'm tracing my requirement to automation scripts, how exactly the configuration management is going to understand that, right? So it's not that I'm going to do manual work to create a test, mark it as automation, and manage the versions manually. I need to have an end-to-end -end solution, and that is where this architecture plays a vital role. So. Let's read the further thing. So, of course, uh, the interface of the GTAA, where G is generic and TAA stands for Test Automation Architecture, uh, describes basically the following. And the following are the SUT interface describes the conjunction connection between the SUT and the TAF, where TAF stands for Test Automation Framework. The Project Management Interface describes the test automation development progress. The Test Management Interface describes the mapping of the test cases definition and automated test cases and configuration management interface describes the CI CD pipelines environments and test work. So on a high level, we just give you the four things which we will be talking about in this entire discussion. And we now understand what exactly they are contributing with and what would be their key responsibilities when we build a test automation architecture. So let's deep dive further here. The next one we have is the diagram which describes to you what exactly the architecture is talking about. So if you require to, uh, the picture is pretty small because that's the size of the slide deck. If you wish, you can just pause and zoom in a bit to just see the picture around and then probably continue with the discussion here so that you can have the keywords in your mind uh, while you listen to this conversation. So. Moving on ahead, of course, if you look at the picture here, this is a sample snapshot of uh, what is a test automation architecture looks like. And right here, if you see uh, on the top, you have the project management. On to the left, you have configuration management. And on the right, you have test management. Let's ignore the last one for a moment now. That is at the bottom, uh, top, left, and right. So if you see, uh, all three are connected to the entire automation architecture, which has further four layers in it. We have test generation layer, we have test definition layer, then we have test execution layer, and then we have test adaptation layer. 
So each of these layers are responsible to do something in particular. For example, the test generation layer would basically be supporting the automated design of the test cases based on the test model. Now, test model can be any such thing, okay? So if I take in consideration an example that what about model-based testing? So I can go ahead and convert or derive or uh, generate whatever use, you know, word you use. I can generate automated scripts right from the business model diagrams. All I need is the support of model-based testing tool, and that can help me to quickly transform a model into an automation script. And the benefit of that is the change management becomes very simple. The maintenance cost of maintaining this automation script using model-based is very cheaper because it takes just a moment to quickly update the changes what you have in the models given to you. So if in case, in simple word, the requirement changes are frequent, we prefer having model-based testing, okay? Because manually maintaining these automation scripts could be very hectic and time-consuming, in return, higher cost. So model-based test tools can be used as one of the option. But at the same time, if you look at the diagram here, it also says uh, you may have other options if you're not using model-based tool. So it is just an optional thing. You may even have manual design. That means writing it yourself, okay? Writing it yourself simply means one thing that you read the requirements, you may have high level uh, test scenarios and you're trying to convert them into uh, the test scripts or you may have manual test cases already written and you're trying to automate them for future reuse. So both the options uh, come into this particular layer and the layer is called as test generation layer, uh, which will be only talking about uh, the creation of the test scripts. And if you see parallelly on the left, I need, to, I need this to be configuration managed that is the IDs, the version control, traceability, etc. On the right-hand side, it should be test managed using a test management tool. I must have a record anywhere in the tool that these automation scripts are getting created and should be, uh, the entire framework should be in line to the project management. That means maybe the date and timelines, okay? When this should get over, so I should even be sticking to that. So those three directions are basically reflecting that like whatever you do in the entire framework architecture should be well linked to configuration management, to test management, and to the project management, okay? So once our generation is over or complete, we can move on to the next one. And the next level we have, or next phase we have is test definition layer. So that was about generation, how exactly will you generate? And definition would be more about the uh, definition and implementation of the test cases or test suite which optionally can be derived from the test model and it contains the means to define high level or low level test. So right here, we can talk about things like the test conditions and uh, the test scenarios or beat about uh, traceability in terms of uh, test coverage, the test data preparation, and even uh, the test procedure. Don't forget the, the particular level is talking about design and implementation. So we may talk about a lot of things like preparing a test suite out of it, and they all should be again in sync with configuration management and test management. Now at this point, you may have a little confusion that then what is the difference between the generation and definition layer, okay? So generation is just the source that what exactly you'll be doing, what is your basis to do that? So if I talk about manual test cases and the business model diagram, they are my test generation layer, identification of the basis which would support the creation of automated script. Whereas definition, definition layer is about creating that, okay? Doing it, implementing it, and then making it ready so that we can go ahead and move to the execution. Let's move on to the third layer. And the third layer of this architecture talks about the test execution layer. And in execution layer, again, you do not me, need me to tell you that what exactly we are expecting. So test execution layer will talk about the executions. And not only that, of course, it's gonna talk about logging of the information during the runtime, should have the capability of capturing the uh, properties from the application, passing the values, collecting the information in form of variables, and certainly creating a test report using that data. So of course, test execution should support the execution and logging and should provide the test execution tool to run the related, selected test automatically and a test logging and reporting mechanism which indeed is going to be the most critical part of it because many people think just running an automated test as well, I have to take care of. Answer is no. It might be something easier for you to understand when the tool generates a, a statistics or logs, 
but may not be presentable to the business or other stakeholders. So you may have to find a reporting method. For example, if you talk about commercial tools, they come with inbuilt reporting methods. But when it comes to open source like Selenium, you do not have a reporting you know, mechanism there. So you might use any other component like TestNG or uh, any other reporting method to populate meaningful reports or else sometime it becomes very difficult to debug our runtime errors in the Selenium script because we don't even understand that what that particular platform is throwing as an error, where exactly we went wrong. So we need the failure results, number of test cases, so we may embed it to test ng or JUnit, and you may see that there are annotations to support you and make results more meaningful. So exactly, the execution layer will talk about all these three things, that is execution, logging, and reporting as well. And finally, the fourth layer, which is talking about adaptation layer, an adaptation layer certainly means that before it reaches out to SUT, okay, that is system under test, it is important for us to check that if there are any kind of additional components required or interfaces required to interact with SUT. Sometimes it can be a set of protocols or sometimes it can be things like GUI, API, which might have some different behaviors. So it's not that simple that you just write an automation script and it might become just executable as in when you have the application with you. Sometimes you need some API interfaces to be called, you need a database connectivity, you may have to have certain protocols Im Im embedded into the automation environment, like when you're working with SAP, you're working with uh, <clears throat> Ajax or Sybil or Citrix, you, you understand that your tools may only perform the test or you know the scripts can be executable when the protocols are understood right or else the same script may not work on the right application so these protocols these apis or even if you talk about some of the applications like mobile or automate automotive applications you may need environment plus simulators and emulators to make that happen because of course you don't have the real car how exactly will you see this behavior so we do this with simulations or virtualizations so all these components which i just mentioned like the ui the API, the protocols, or the simulation, emulation, virtualization of services will all be in the adaptation layer. And by having all these in place, that is generation, definition, execution, and adaptation, we go then and interact with SUT, okay, the system under test. And that basically fulfills the entire expectation of architecture and comes to the end as one big flow of the architecture. So at the end, if you see the entire three part, if you see the test automation framework is from definition, uh, execution, and then adaptation layer. So these three layers are basically referred to as test automation framework, which we discussed a moment back. And entire thing, including generation, project management, and test management is called as test automation architecture. And then it pushes down to the SUT, which is a uh, system under test. So that means now you're ready at this point of time when you reach the test automation framework completion, you are now going to run this test with everything equipped to perform an execution on the SUT, where SUT means the system under test, which is being tested, right? So put together, I think this is simple to understand that what exactly we do in our day-to-day -day activities, we're just trying to correlate to that of the automation solutions. So maybe one single tool will have all these capabilities, or you may need different tools to have all the capabilities. For example, models, model-based testing to generate that automation script, but for execution, you may need something, but maybe execution tool doesn't have reporting option. You may need a third-party software to do that. Then you may need simulation and emulation from other software, another vendor. So, you know, it can be completely an integrated tool chain to build the entire automation architecture. And certainly the configuration management, test management, and project management will all be coming from different tools. So just don't see this as a definition thing, okay? We want you to understand that how exactly everything is going to be a network put together to make an entire end-to-end -end automation solution, right? So that's what we want you to convey you from this particular topic, and I hope we have done it, right? If you still have any questions, you know what exactly to do. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.